How does a healthy lifestyle change your life? So with nowadays, as we see with other countries, so like in America, for instance, a lot of like obesity, a lot of chronic diseases, kidneys, lungs, liver, a lot of it is rampant, the high prevalence of that. And because of that, it's due to the SAD diet. So your standard American diet, SAD, SAD. A lot of it's highly processed foods, um, sedentary activity, and a lot of stress and Such lack of sleep. So sedentary activities could be someone who's like sitting at a desk all day, that's not moving around. Maybe they shift towards the left, or shift towards the right as they answer a phone call, but they're not moving. A daily moving practice is not part of their life. So if you change your sleep, more sleep, better quality. If you change your nutrition, plant-based foods, um, animal-based foods sometimes, staying away from foods that are obviously bad for you, like anything that's high in processed sugar, high in fat, or just a lot of calories in general. Essentially, what a lot of research is showing now, that just because you are sedentary, you, you go to work, and then you work out for one hour, doesn't really do anything because eight hours, nine hours of your day, you're seated. You're not moving around, especially with all this white collar position work. The biggest thing is I would not fall in love with this whole fast food, fast food, fast food. Uh, you can stay away from that. It's okay to go home and eat food from your fridge. <laughs> but the catch there is it depends what you have there. Also, you're at an age to where like you can't, those, all these healthy foods may not be to your extent, meaning to where you don't have the ability to always have that, right? But I do know you, you, if, you, if you're going to use that as an excuse <laughs> that, oh, I don't have the funds to buy this healthy stuff, but you have the funds to buy the uh, bad stuff. So what you do is give, give and take a little. Um, what I eat for breakfast, and this is just me, and this is my own goals. It's based off of my goals because everybody's goals requires different intakes and different, I'd say, caloric deficits. So my, my, this is what I eat. Two boiled eggs, uh, wheat toast with peanut butter on it. I'm a peanut butter head. Uh, I'm not afraid to eat bacon, turkey bacon, right? And uh, I'd have bananas. I'm a potassium type of guru. Um, that's what I eat all the time. And um, my lunches and my dinners are pretty much the same. And I'm going to get real, real with you. I'm boring. <clears throat> Brown rice, sweet potatoes, and baked chicken. That's the answer. <laughs> and that's as, as plain cut and dry as I can say it. And for me, that works. Meaning if I eat other stuff, I can tell. I can feel the difference. I can tell. I say you have to find what works for you. Because you can eat what I just, you could take what I just said and eat that and be like, this is not working for you. And there's a reason why, because that's not your body. So it, it all depends. So I'd say stick within the food chain, I mean the food groups. You can have your carbs, unless you're carb sensitive, you can stay away from that. I mean, a little bit is okay. Um, obviously your protein and for um, your dairy products, I'm not really such a milk guy. I don't do milk. <laughs> Everybody in the fitness industry that tells people, drink this or eat that and all this, it's like, yeah, that works for certain people. There's no blueprint that says this is going to work for every human being in the world. Not possible. Not possible. So there's, there's learning experiences, there's courage, and that's the approach of healthy living. It's not your alarm clock doesn't ring and you're like, oh, I'm healthy. Do this, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this. Especially if you, the day prior, you just ate whatever you fuck you wanted to eat. No way, not fucking happening. My biggest advice is small change, small change, small change. And eventually it'll turn into a bigger change. But if you wake up and decide, I'm not eating this, 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 this anymore, nine times out of 10, that's not sustainable. It's not gonna last. You're gonna go back to the shitty ways within, I'd say two weeks. is if I had to, if you had to try to change one lifestyle factor, it would definitely be stress because from stress comes stress eating, from stress comes a seeking of comfort foods and those comfort foods are typically gonna be higher in fat, higher in sugar, higher in salt. And what comfort foods? Comfort foods could be something that's more cultural or it could be something you had as a child. So let's say for me, for instance, a comfort food for me could be something like a mac and cheese. Right, because for me that gives me warmth, that gives me comfort, that brings me back to a place in my life as a child where wasn't maybe a lot of stress. You know, everyone's life's a little bit different. Maybe as a child you had more stress, but you know, more or less, usually people are, were less stressed when they were kids. 
But what I feel is challenging about having trying to have a healthy lifestyle is basically staying the course. Mm-hmm. Staying on path to your goal and staying on path of trying to live healthy. Meaning um, you have to be mentally strong. You have to have a lot of discipline. And uh, it takes hard work. There's times to, you're not going to be able to do things that your friends are doing um, because you have to withdraw some, from some of those habits. Um, you're going to have to rebuild certain, certain habits towards your goals, towards being healthy. And I feel that's the most challenging thing for us as humans because we desire a lot of things. And we, all the things that we want, the easy stuff is, is very, is bad, but it's easy to get. And I feel that that's very challenging, especially when you have all of this around you. Um, seeing advertisements of foods, <laughs> seeing, seeing people do things that you know you're not supposed to be doing, like, that's challenging to live in a world like that. And uh, it can stray you off course sometimes, so I feel that that's the challenge. But if you really want it and you're about that, you're about that shit, um, yeah, you would stay healthy, you would be disciplined here and mentally strong and think about the goals in the future, think about your gains and shit like that pretty much, right? So that's my thing. It's like um, fried chicken tastes good and I used that. Yes, I did. Fried chicken tastes good as fuck. <laughs> but is it worth it? Not to me. Like opinion about ads and advertisements and how they, um, food is. They're advertising bad things. I feel every now and then they get a good advertisement about, you know, food or what you should eat, but for the most part, they're advertising the stuff we're not supposed to really eat, but they're doing that for a reason. Um, a lot of that stuff is cheaper, and it's easier to make in bulk loads, and um, the masses, which is us, we, we cling to that stuff, meaning um, I walk outside of this facility, I make a right, within 200 yards, there's a Popeye's and McDonald's. ASAP. Like, it's all around us. Um, you turn the TV on. You're going to see food commercials, especially late night. You're going to see a bunch of food commercials, you know? Um, it's rare you go down the block and you see nothing but um, good venues and good places to eat at that are healthy. You might find little uh, bright spots. What I mean by bright spots is if there's a block of Taco Bell, Wendy's, McDonald's, Popeye's, Kennedy's, whatever... A bright spot would be a little organic shop. That's a bright spot. There's like tiny little ones along the way that you have to Google to find them. And I feel like that's hard. You have to go out of your way to find good stuff like that. You don't have to go out of your way to find those quick foods, quick, quick, fast. You don't have to go out of your way. Step outside the block, make a left or a right. I dare you to walk three or four blocks, you'll find something. Go to a deli, you'll find all that trash there. really not like a real thing because there's food all around us it was it's called, just like, food desert yeah. so desert figure a desert there's nothing around there's a couple of cactuses and two scorpions fighting in the corner whatever there's not much going on right but a food desert is a term used in the nutrition world that means there's not food around and that deals with food security because a lot of people that are coming up from impoverished or impoverished um, areas. A lot of times there's not food around in general, but we don't see that nowadays. The food desert is an old concept that there should be a new concept or redefinition of it that the foods that are around are the foods that are highly processed, that are have a lot of fat, a lot of sugar, a lot of salt, and it's all around us. So Popeyes, Kennedy, Taco Bell, McDonald's, I mean, just name them. They're all over the place and then you do have to go into different pockets to find, you know, the golden nuggets here and there, but they're hard to come by. And the reason why there's so much of the fast food is because the way our government is set up. You have dairy council, meat councils, you have these food companies that are really powerful, really strong, Coca-Cola, chicken, all of that, that really send lobbyists to Congress, shoots down bills like um, GMO bills, organic bills, um, knowing how many calories, or like the calories you see in all those fast food restaurants, they had to fight for that for more than a decade to make that happen because you have big businesses that have lobbyists, have Congress in their pockets, 
and that go to these bill hearings that shoot them down because they know if they get something passed that says, oh, red meat has potential carcinogens, that their sales will drive down. So another reason why is you see a lot of like high fructose corn syrup, a lot of products made from corn. I detail corn specifically because all of corn is GMO, all of soy is GMO. If it says organic, that's a lie. It's not organic, it's GMO. Like 99% because of the seeds, they're all manufactured by Monsanto, primarily in other corporations that has a patent on a seed. That's insane. Literally a patent on a seed, and if you try to make your own seeds, the government will find you and throw you in jail. So with that, the government has subsidized all of these farmers to only produce certain crops. That's why everything has some form of corn syrup in it. Whether it's high fructose, whether it's invert sugar, whether it's all these different forms of sugar. Corn storage? Cornstarch, malodextrin, all these things that are fillers, that are preservatives, that are emulsifiers, thickeners. There are all these things to give food its palatability, but we have to just go back to where, you know, real food is what you get from the ground or from the tree or you kill it. That's it. There shouldn't be any of these products. Yeah, there's convenience. Yeah, we're solving world hunger issues because now there's more food, but at a cost. Because now we don't have things like rickets. We don't have things like night blindness because vitamin A, vitamin D, they're all fortified in a lot of foods. But then we have these other issues of obesity, diabetes, which leads to chronic lung, kidney, liver damage, um, lymphomas, cancers from this giant surplus of this unhealthy food, which is all around us. So the concept of food deserts doesn't exist because there's food all around us, but the quality is crap because essentially the government has set this up this way because the government is driven and fueled off money. Everyone's fueled off greed, and that's what it is. If you think companies, food places have your health in mind, they do not. If you walk into GNC even, they're selling you all these products because they don't care about your health. They're trying to get money out of your pocket. The supplemental industry is the biggest robber of them all because they're selling you products with very little research behind it. Maybe one or two trials show it, but those one or two research trials are looking at the N equals one or N equals 20. N being the number of participants in the study. And that doesn't show the general populace. You can't extrapolate a study of 10 people and say, oh, 10 people saw benefits of doing leg curls. No, because that could not work for every single person. Being so let's take a look real quick at the spring tree maple syrup, right? The ingredients on this are simply 100% pure ma maple syrup. Great. So that's what this one is. Now up here we have typical store brand, um, very well known, Aunt Jemima, right? Aunt Jemima. Ingredients are high fructose corn syrup. Ingredients are high fructose corn syrup, water, cellulose gum, salt, natural artificial flavors. But the first thing is high fructose corn syrup and then water. So most of this is just sugar and water. Um, this one's 24 ounces, this one's eight ounces. This bottle costs $3.29 as opposed to this bottle which costs $8.19. A bunch of ingredients, one ingredient, lots of chemicals, no chemicals. This one is more than 100%, 200%, more than 100% more than that one, 200% of this price. My biggest thing on those um, companies that are just that want our money and they don't look out for our health, like I said, they just want your money and they're focusing on giving the person or the user a lot of decisions, right? A lot of bad decisions. They're not like here A and B, they're like A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So you have like a roster of decisions <laughs> to choose from badly. and. Um, I just feel like at the end, I could be wrong for saying this, but I passionately believe that, that um, they're winning and they always are going to win. And I'm in this industry to help people go the opposite way. The reason why I say that is because um, there's a lot of other things that come into play, but like I said, they're always around. You can find a McDonald's or a Burger King faster than a gym. Um, there are gyms that are always around block by block, but if you notice that um, they have peak times, 
those fast food places are in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. And I feel that um, they've been around for a long time and they always will be because humans are hungry and humans like to eat. And not all human beings want to be healthy. Not all human beings make the right decisions. So that goes back into what you said, do we have control? You have control to go to McDonald's or not. You have control to eat McDonald's five times a week. That's all your control. Nobody's forcing you. Those companies are making money based off our decisions. So we have complete control over all of that. And they're smart. <laughs> they're smart. They understand that some people are in a financial bind and they'll make bad food cost 99 cents. They will even give you this. You pay $2 and you get three burgers. Two for three? What? Or Sign me up. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, they win. So, I mean, I feel that's sort of why isn't health important to you i feel like if you ask that question to everyone in the world they would look at you stupid because then health is important to every individual because every individual's purpose on this earth is longevity is to live a long life and to live optimally through you know eating through through sleep through you know relieving stress i mean health is important for the reason of I mean, our natural procreation urges to sustain our species through a long period of time, but then also it's because living for yourself, but then living for others. So if you're not a parent, then you want to live a long, healthy life because a long, healthy life equals happiness. You don't want to live unhealthily, then it could bite you in the ass later. That's why people tend to, you know, live short or fast lives because then they, they just focus on the instant gratifications and they don't think about long term. And that's long term is where then people then care about health, but it's already too late. So it really looks to be that we want to focus on things that we could do now to sustain our longevity on the long run.